Hey there, what's up everyone? Um, so today I'm going to be doing my first arboreal rehouse video. Um, we're going to be rehousing <coughs> this beauty over here, which is a large avicularia durantis. Um, it's, it's enclosure is okay, but I'd like to give it something bigger. We have a, a sub-adult male on the way that um, hopefully she'll be breeding with next season. So I'd like to give her a slightly bigger enclosure, just a little bit um, better designed for for their for their webbing structure um because they like to web the upper areas of an enclosure and um yeah just to give them more space to move around in and uh yeah in general feel a little bit more at home so i'll be using one of my own custom enclosures <clears throat> this is an enclosure i designed way back in the day actually it started out as, as little enclosures but it's basically just a um, swinging open door with a, a latch um, gap over here, gap at the back for aeration, and of course here, where this lid slides in and out, there's another gap at the top here. So this is a very well aerated or very, very well ventilated um, enclosure, especially for Avic, Caribena, Iberopora species, and so on. Um, so yeah, what we're basically going to be doing today is just putting in some basic hardscape. I'm going to be using some of my monster mix. It's my own um, mix of soils. And um, yeah, just setting up a basic enclosure. So let's get started. Um, what we're going to do first, I think, is just put in one one bag of soil. Um, so it's just basic organic soil that I use. Um, it's organically prepared, organically put together over a, like a slow period um, by the manufacturers. And I just mix um, extra amounts of cocoa peat in here to make it a little bit more, um, or to help help it hold water a little bit better. Um, but that's it. Otherwise, it's just basically organic and organic potting soil that's mixed with cocoa fiber to make a good substrate, which is also good if I put um, live plants in because the, the, the soil has a natural amount of uh, nutrients inside it to nurture the plants. So let's get going with our first one here. That's one. Let me just spread that out. And then I've picked this piece of hardscape because what they tend to do is they tend to web up here uh, or into a corner. That's also why I build a tank like this with no ventilation here because they tend to, to web there instead of coming forward. Um, sometimes they do web onto these moving sliders of mine, but they, if, I, if I sort of build the hardscape to here, they'll web behind here. Um, and I find that to be a a characteristic of many of my um, my AVIX. So that's that's what I'm going to try and do. So I'm going to be using this piece of hardscape to try and give her an, uh, a vertical space to web against. Uh, let's see how we're going to put that in. I think like that. Yeah, that's great because then that gives her structure here to build webbing against um, and sort of creates a barrier to the front of the enclosure. So. That's nice and tight. Just going to put in a second layer of soil now. Don't really need to, but I think we should just to make sure humidity has a bigger buffer. Okay. I think that should be more than enough substrate for what we're doing here. Taper it a little bit to the back. And really press in underneath, especially if you've got a big piece of heavy hardscape, because it helps to just anchor the, the base. But yeah, we've got a nice gap through there, gap through there. This will be perfect for, for an AVIC. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to place a water dish at the bottom here. I like to use these um, sort of the base of a uh, plastic pot because it just creates a nice large area for the for the water it creates a little bit of evaporation as well so that humidity in the tank is also a little bit higher not that you need much with the, all this amount of soil 
but obviously we'll also maintain that with regular mistings and so on. So I'm going to put it here at the base. So if she does make her way down here, she's going to find her way to water very easily. I'll also only be giving her, especially as we lead up now to breeding, um, my brand of water called Aranya. Uh, this is a specially prepared high mineral mix of water. It's not, it's not your average mineral water that you'll buy in the shops. There's a high concentrate of minerals which I've developed over time, which only acts as a very good hydration supplement. But it seems to really help with um, overall overall health of the teas and their um, their digestion. Um, they just seem overall to have more spunk. So I'm sticking to my water. It works well and uh, seems to be getting quite popular with other hobbyists as well. So it saved a number of teas um, that have been dying, which is great. I've managed to save about five or six teas, dying teas with this water too. So it really, really seems to be doing some magic. Okay, let's get our... Our lady friend ready. Okay, madam, I'm going to show you off to the world now. Let's get you out. Come okay, on. <laughs> Stubborn lady. Let's get your enclosure empty. You see how they raise their bum in the air like that in defense because they'd rather rub rub their bristles onto you than um than bite you come on madam we need you to come outside come on there we go there we go come on let's get you out here onto the tank come on Just nudging her along by her back legs. Just creating enough discomfort for her to move. And she's a very big girl, as you can see. Just get a good job we have for you. And into your new enclosure you go. That's how it looks from the front. her new home for the foreseeable future so from there to that so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video um, she'll be in here for the next foreseeable future and um, hopefully she's going to drop a sack for us in here which would be great just gonna close the enclosure and she's good to go. Where is she hiding now? Just caught a spot in the bottom here. Okay. But I'm sure she'll be fine in here. Cool. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.